Hey everyone, in this tutorial you'll be exposed to a simple way to detect if the player has nodded yes or no during your Google VR experience. While many of our other videos primarily work with dragging and dropping in the Unity window itself, this one is going to focus a bit more on scripting. This method isn't particularly sophisticated, but instead is meant to serve as an easy to understand intro on how to recognize this type of input from the user. The scope of this lesson will only cover an implementation for recognizing yes and no head nod, but the approach shown here can easily be reused and modified to detect other types of head gestures. For this walkthrough, I decided to have a sphere game object react to nodding yes by turning green and nodding no by turning red. As you can see, there's also a message printout in the console panel that will appear upon recognizing our desired head gesture inputs. Well, let's get to it. I'm going to create a new Unity project called Head Gestures to act as a blank canvas for this video and set up the basics needed to make this demo work. After you have your new project, import the Google VR for Unity package, excluding the content in the Demo Scenes folder. I'm going to quickly put together a basic Google VR scene by dragging a GVR main prefab into the project hierarchy and deleting the default main camera provided in the starter scene. So we can easily observe the changes in the player's head rotation. Set the clear flags in GVR main's main camera to skybox. At this point, we now have a scene we can work with. Next, we'll make a new c -sharp script named Nod Recognition that will contain all the code that we'll write for this project. This script will need an array of vector 3s that will hold the head's rotation in space represented in Euler angle format over a period of 80 calls to update. It'll also need a private integer variable, which I'll call index, that will keep track of the current position in the array as it gets updated. In start, initialize angles as a new array of 80 vector 3s and index to 0. We'll use our update function to store the Euler angle representation of the player's head rotation in the element of angles accessed by the current value of index. Then, we'll increment index so that the next element of angles will be accessed in subsequent calls to update. Before I go any further, I want to point out that recording the head's orientation in the update function directly is not the most consistent way to do this. I've only done it like this to try to simplify the content provided in this tutorial. Since the frame rate will change from computer to computer and device to device, how frequently update gets called is subject to change as well. A more precise implementation would consist of only assigning to the angles array when some set amount of time has passed. This would additionally allow you to control the near exact time window between each survey for potential inputs. If you think this version could be useful, feel free to comment below or send us an email and I'd be happy to lead you in the right direction. Once every element of angles contains some orientation, we want to process these values to see if a yes or no nod has occurred. To make the code cleaner, I'm going to run this check in its own separate void function called check movement. Inside of check movement, create four local Boolean variables that will represent if the head is rotated right, left, up, or down. Each of these should be initialized to false. Before we can add the rest of check movement, we need to have something to compare each element of angles to. So, create a private global vector3 variable that will be used to represent the Euler angles of the player's head at the beginning of the tracking session and initialize it to the player's head rotation on start. You can just copy and paste this from the first line of our update function. Now we can create a for loop in check movement that will run through every element in angles and compare it to center angle. We'll first check if the player has rotated their head far enough up from their original orientation to count as an up movement. I personally felt that 20 was a satisfactory difference in rotation among the head's x-axis, but this number can be adjusted to better fit whatever you're working on. To save a tiny bit of time, I'm going to add a second check so that up isn't just repeatedly assigned to if it's already true. I'm now going to tack on an else if statement to check if the player has moved their head down. To make things easier, you can just copy and paste the original if statement and switch out some of its values. The displacement from the center angle's x value should be the opposite sign from the up checks and less than should be replaced by a greater than symbol.
The last modification we need to make is simply changing the references to the up boolean to down. I'm using an else if here so that if this particular rotation has already been registered as up, it won't check if it's a down movement, since it's impossible to be both. For the left and right bools, you can copy what we just wrote and edit it accordingly. Instead of looking at any x value, this code should instead compare each vector 3's y component. And every reference to up should be changed to left, as well as every reference to down should become right. After recording this video, I noticed that I switched the up and down variables in respect to what they represent. But everything should work just fine regardless, because a yes nod needs both booleans anyways. Now that the Euler angle rotations of the player's head over our desired time period have been analyzed, we want to use these direction bools to make something happen in the scene. We can facilitate a reaction to the player shaking their head to indicate no by placing our desired lines of code within an if statement that is dependent on both left and right being true. The same idea applies to nodding, and any code we want to occur when the player nods yes can be placed in an if statement that checks the states of up and down. For now, I'm going to add in a print statement in both of these that will notify us when the respective parameters for each nod have been met. The print statements are alright for the sake of this tutorial, but to better visually indicate when an input has been received, I'm going to create the sphere I mentioned before. This sphere game object will be represented by a public variable named responsive object that we will assign to in the editor in just a few steps. Inside the left and right if statement, I'll get the sphere's render as a component and set its material color to red. In the next check, I'll copy and paste the same line and change the material color to green. The last chunk of code we need to add will reset the, the script's global variables, namely index, the angles array, and center angle, upon completing a single gesture cycle. Create a void reset gesture function that will take care of this. Its contents should be identical to what is currently in start. After filling in reset gesture, it will be called from start to set the initial values of the variables, and after check movement is called an update. Before we add our script and assemble our scene, there's a slight modification we can make to the last two if statements to better refine what will be registered as a yes or no head gesture. After checking left and right, add another statement that makes sure that the user wasn't just shaking their head crazily in every direction and deliberately shook their head to signal no. This check will return true only if both up and down didn't occur. Make a similar modification in the next section that ensures left and right aren't both true in addition to up and down. These checks will still pass if only one of the Boolean inputs is true. For example, a player nodded yes but went slightly to the right side. This would register as up, down, and right, and would still pass. It only stops the color from changing in both sections if all four booleans are true, indicating that the player is moving their head in every direction and not actually nodding along a particular axis. You should now be able to add nod recognition to GBR main as a component without any issues. Now finally create the reactive sphere game object and place it at 004 in the scene which is directly in front of the camera upon beginning. This sphere should be dragged into the responsive object field in GBR main's inspector window. Finally, if you press play in the editor, the sphere will turn red when you simulate the player shaking their head from side to side, and green when they nod their head up and down. If you found this video helpful, you may enjoy our other videos covering Google VR input systems, including drag and drop and timed gaze input or our series covering how to remake the classic arcade game Asteroids for cardboard. Thanks so much for tuning in, and if you have any ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future, we'd love to hear about them in the comments below.